Hey, good morning. Good seeing you on our live stream again. I hope you had a good start into the Friday, last day of the week. Today we talk about Vertex AI function calling. You probably know LLMs, they are used to stuck in time, right? They know everything about the past and they probably lack information after their training date. And this leads to inaccurate responses. Additionally, large language models, they have no direct way of interacting with the outside world. So they cannot act on behalf of you or act automatically. But this has changed and large language models have become more and more capable. And I guess it all started with RUG, Retrieval Augmented Generation, where we could feed information that is retrieved in real time um, into our large language models, into the context window. Now we are seeing multimodal capabilities, allowing our models to process large videos, images, audio, and text, up to 2 million tokens of context size windows, even 10 million token in research on the Google side. And this allows us to process documents using, for example, um, I process documents without the need for actually using work. In addition, LMs or large language models, they also turn into reasoning engines. For example, with function calling, or also called tooling, um, it, it allows us to, for example, integrate web search, call external APIs directly with our large language model. So let's see how we can exter uh, call external APIs with Gemini function calling today. And it all starts with a function declaration. Or well, let me first describe the use case we want to uh, talk about today. Imagine you have um, an online store and you have a customer support and the customer is asking, what's the status of my, of my order? And you give him, uh, it gives you an order ID. Instead of the model just giving a generic answer or an outdated response, we need to retrieve this information in real time, information of the specific order. And we could then respond with something like, your order, if the order number is on its way and it's expected tomorrow. But for that, we need to call an external API. And this is part of, of what function calling is doing. But that's not all. For example, let's assume the customer decides they want to initiate a return. They're not happy with the product, they want to initiate a return. Since we can connect the function calling, the large language models with external systems, we can also initiate a return automatically on behalf of the user. So no involvement of a support um, employee here if you're using large language models with function calling. Just one of many ideas, you could also integrate it into your smart home system and you can tell your large language model to turn off the, the lamps. You call your external API of your smart home system and your lamps turn off. So it's, it's really nice and a lot of use cases around it. It all starts with a function declaration. So let's, hope, let's head over to the code as always, because those sessions are um, focusing on code. And I have a few examples here. So we start with the simple example. And what you can see here on the left side or here on, 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 on the side, this is a function declaration. A function declaration describes what a function can do and its parameters. And the Gemini model uses this function declaration and the information to decide which function to use and how to pass the parameters or extract the parameters from the text, from your prompt, to make it fit to your external function, your external API. And because the model decides that, it's, a, it's extremely important to include as much detail as possible into this function declaration. There are two ways on how you can do this function declaration. The first one is by using this open API specification that like you can see here. It's basically just a, a JSON object or objects here describing what your function is doing, what kind of parameters are there, and a description for the model to better understand what it should do. An alternative approach, we can also use the existing function and then call this function declaration from func and just pass the function to um, our function declaration. So if you have an external API you want to call, you first need to have a function declaration describing what this external API can do so the model understands how to pass parameters and 
uh, also help the model to understand which function to use, because there could be multiple functions, right? And from there, we have our code, which we usually have. So we have our generative model. I'm using Flash in this example. And here we have where we are adding the actual tooling. So you see, we can have multiple tools and tools can have multiple functions. So we can pass multiple tools and tools can have multiple functions. So you can structure your toolings and you can structure your functions. This is all passed to the model. And then we can actually um, run this. So you see, we have I have this um, prompt here. Can you check by my order with a specific ID is? This could be a request from one of the users. And because we only have one function, you see how this will fit to this one and how the Gemini model is actually doing the reasoning about that. So let's run this. Called simple.py will be, as always, on the um, GitHub repository. All right, you see, we now, let me scroll down a bit into the code. You see, I'm printing all the function calls. And if you are scrolling down, we now have one function call which is returned from the Gemini model. So it understands from our prompt that it needs to use the get order status function. And it also extracting the parameters from our prompt. Let me open up the prompt again. Extracting the parameters from our prompt into the function call. And you might ask, where are we actually calling the external API? And I think this is something which confuses me, confused me at the beginning. The function calling on the Google side is out of the box, not automatically calling your, your function. It's just doing the reasoning. So it, it gives you the response on which function fits this query. If you have multiple functions, it decides which function fits and matches the parameters. This is, I think this is very important to understand um, because yeah, I had the very first one confusion where I thought about it. this is automatic and it's not automatic. Talk about automatic function calling later, but just keep that in mind. All right, we now take that um, one step further and let us open a little bit, a little bit more or a complete example. As you can see here, um, let me scroll to the top. I'm having basically the same. I have a function to return and I have a function for the get the order status. Here I'm using the open API, open API specification. Here I'm using a function. And if we scroll down, you see we're calling the same. We are sending the, the tools, but here we are now iterating over the object where we're actually getting the functions back from the model. And since the model decides which function to call, we can simply have a if, if else, and decide, all right, if the model understood this is the get order status function, we call an API, just have now external, uh, I have a few dummy data here. We probably would have something like um, request, and then you're calling request.post, and you're calling the external API here. Just have dummy data, because I don't have any um, delivery system, right? So just dummy data and returning this dummy data to the model. If we have the initiate return, it will call this API. This is how you need to implement this manually, right? It's not done automatically for you. So first, as I said, we iterate over all of the available function calls by returned by the model. And then for matching um, function calls, we call the API. And then we decide which action to take. From there, we get a response, and this response from the API, we need again pass back to the Gemini model because we want to do something with this response, right? And this is what we do here. So we use again generate content. We are passing our, our prompt, our user input, and we are passing the um, content from the function call. So you see, we have response candidate content. Oh, sorry, passing the, the response from the function call. And there's a helper function, which is called part from function re response. So this is how the model understands, all right, this is a response from a function. And we're passing this together with the prompt to the model itself, and then generating the output. So let's also run this example. So you see it understood. We have the get order status function which we need to call. 
And then with the second iteration, the second run to the Gemini model by passing the, the function and the function response to the model again, you see this is how what we get back from the model as a response. Your order is expected to arrive tomorrow. And if you scroll to the top, you see this is our RP response. We return the ID, the ID and we just expect the delivery date tomorrow. And the model understands from this data how to respond to the user. So this is not hard coded. This is created by the Gemini model. So Gemini function calling, it's I think its flexibility lies in, in its ability to actually identify and delegate tasks, um, but it relies on, on our code to, um, to complete this task. So you need to implement the function coding. And once we retrieve the, the function calls from the model, we execute them or we execute the functions ourselves, retrieve the necessary information, and then pass this information back again to the Gemini model. So it's a two-pass process, right? First, we decide we're using the Gemini model, getting the data, sending again to the Gemini model, doing something with the data, and getting the response back. And after generating the API response, as I said, we send everything to the Gemini model, and then we get this nice answer from the model itself. You, you have seen I have this, this if-else statements here to, to check with the function callings. This is obviously, if you have a lot of functions, doesn't make any sense. Um, there, is, there is a nicer way to do that. If you're familiar with Python, there are probably many ways to do that. Um, I like to use this dynamic way where we, have, where we basically have an, uh, a map function which maps the function name to the actual function, as you can see here. And I think this is the most dynamic way on how you could automatically handle this without adding if-elses all the time. Just add your function, add this to the function handler uh, mapping, and then you are ready to go with those, um, let's call it, it's a dictionary, right? It's dynamic function exec execution in this case. Since we are calling, or since the model can call external APIs, security is um, really important. So if, you're, if one of your users maybe has a prompt which could inject or extract data from an external system, which is not related to this specific user, could be, right? So you need to make sure that the data sent to your API is not malicious and you maybe need to implement additional checks here. I said there is automatic function calling. Um, I googled it and I found something which looked like there is automatic function calling enabled for the Vertex AI SDK, but it was for the Google AI um, SDK. So there are two different products, Vertex AI, which is for enterprises where you can use generative AI, and there's Google AI, which is more meant for private developer or quick iterations. So the Google AI SDK has automatic function calling, but the Vertex AI SDK, at least of today as recording this video or doing this live stream, is, doesn't have automatic function calling. I checked the SDK and for the Vertex AI SDK, and I actually could find, um, could find a link which lead me to the um, GitHub repository. And in the GitHub repository, I found there is something coming. It's not yet in the latest version of the Vertex AI SDK, but there will be automatically function calling available for the Vertex AI SDK, but it's not yet in the 6.4 version of the, of the SDK available. Let me anyway show you how this works, but you can see um, this is now the latest version of the SDK. I have this automatic function calling responder. So it's, it's not yet available. You see, I cannot go into the code because it's not yet released. It's just in the GitHub repo. But it's basically working very similar. We just need to define this automatic function calling responder and passing that to the start chat. And this way, the model knows, or, all right, we have um, this function declarations because it's knowing them over the tools. And then it will automatically call the functions for you. Probably we'll see this in a couple of weeks. Um, if you want to use it, you need to download the GitHub repo of the Vertex AI SDK and use it like this. I cannot simply pip install it at the moment. Um, and this supposedly only works with the, with the chat approach. Um, so you cannot use it with um, generate content. You can only use it when you are actually using the um, send, manager, send messages approach. Probably up and coming. If this is released, I will publish an, like, an article or a short video about it. All right, pricing. Um, pricing is, is the same, right? There is no 
dedicated pricing for, for function calling. You're basically calling what you're sending to your, to your API. Um, no dedicated pricing for that. And it's important to know you can also do parallel function calling. I forgot to show that actually. So we can have a prompt which has multiple questions. So what is the capital of Berlin? And can you check where my order with ID is? Probably not a very um, real use case, but it's enough to, to showcase the um, parallel function calling capabilities. So let's call this again. And you see now, where do we have it? Yeah, sorry. This is flash, that's a good point. So parallel function calling is only supported with Pro. Let's see, it's live. So we need to change to Pro and then we actually get parallel function calling, meaning the model can respond to both in parallel. So we now see we have two parts as a response. The first part is the actual answer to our question. And the second part is our function call. This you only get with Pro, not with Flash. So if you want to have parallel function calling, you need to use Pro for that. Quick tip, because we had this with, uh, with quite a few customers, Google recommends to use a lower temperature for function calling, so set it to zero. This drastically improves the um, function calling capabilities and focus on clearly writing the descriptions and the parameters and the description for the parameters as good as possible, because this helps the model to identify which function to, to use. And I can also recommend to use uh, to combine system prompts together with your function calling. This works extremely well as well. All right, not too complicated. As you see, it's very easy to use. There are a lot of use cases around it. So if you want to, want to give this a try, use it. We have, for example, customers, they, they use this to call external APIs so they can fetch logs. So they can say, all right, there was an uh, outage yesterday at 12 a.m. Please fetch the logs for this specific project and this specific service. And then they go into a database, fetch all the logs, return it, and you get some insights into how these things work. And for that, you don't even need to interact directly with an API, uh, with a database, because you maybe have an API endpoint which already can do that. Just one of many possible ways on how you could use function calling. So short session today, but it's also, it's a easy to use topic, but it's extremely powerful. So probably if there are no questions, and the, and the stream, I hope you have a wonderful weekend soon and see you next week. Um, probably we talk about either document understanding with multimodal models or control generations with um, JSON. So see you next week. Bye-bye.